Let's talk about dog toothbrushes and which might be the best fit for you. Now, I have gone through an evolution of toothbrushes for my dogs to find the best fit for us. And I actually recommend that you do as well. So we're gonna break down the different types of toothbrushes that you can be using. And then I'm gonna talk about how I went through different iterations of toothbrushes to introduce my dog to brushing their teeth so that they were comfortable and not afraid. That gave me a little bit more leverage and a little bit more control over what I was doing and how we built up to where we are today so that you can do something similar for your dog. So the first and most obvious type of toothbrush is this dual end toothbrush. You've got a bigger side on one half and a smaller side on the other half, which can be good for different size teeth, but also different size dogs. It has a normal handle just like our toothbrushes do. And these are usually like a soft to maybe a medium bristle and very easy for you to clean your dog's teeth with. But if you don't know what you're doing, it can be a little hard to control it while also getting your dog's mouth open. And it can be a little bit scary for your dog to use as well. So I don't recommend starting with this, but we'll come back to that. Now, another the kind that you can be doing is the little bristled one that you put on your finger. So it will have kind of a size friendly end to it. And then it will have the bristles on one side that you can then insert into your dog's mouth and you can go ahead and brush. But because it doesn't have a long stick, it's not going to you know, function the same way. So it's not as scary. It gives you more control because you're right there nice and direct to your dog. I will say these do kind of flip around while you're using them and they're meant to so that you can do the different sides without having to like completely flip things over or change your hand in a weird way. But also they do it when you don't want to. So this is another option. And then we have this option, which is just like a silicone and it has little silicone spikes on it. Now there is an alternative to this that I have in my house, but I moved it. It got moved on me and I couldn't find it for this video. So I've talked about it before. It has these little spikes the entire way around. I love those. Those are fantastic. I'll link my favorite one down below. You can get a bunch of them for really cheap. But this allows you to brush it without having those bristles in here. They're shorter. They're going to be a little more comfortable for your dog. And so you've got a lot of control with this one. And if you use the version that has it all the way around, it doesn't matter what side it's on because you always have access to scraping off their teeth with that silicone. So let me talk about the process that I went through now that you've seen the different types of toothbrushes. When I first started this, I did not want my dogs to be scared. They were a little bit nervous about some of these big things. And so I actually started out um, I think I started out with one of these and it didn't go well. So I immediately moved to one of the silicone ones and I tried the ones with the bristles just on the edge. It was very difficult to get things cleaned because it constantly moved around and it just didn't do a great job. So I very much like the ones that go all the way around. Those are magical. Now, typically they are fairly soft and because they have the little spikes all the way around, it doesn't matter what angle you're getting at. You can always put your hand in however's comfortable for you because there's always a way for them to come into contact with your teeth. Now, with this in mind, you do have to remember your hand is in their mouth and their your finger, not even your hand, is in their mouth. So you want to work your way up to this. Do not frighten your dog. Don't just go shoving things into your dog's mouth they could potentially hurt you, maybe intentionally, maybe accidentally. Sometimes when we put things in dogs' mouths, they lock up their jaw or they kind of like bite because that's just what they do. Um, when I brush my dog's teeth, even today, they kind of like chew on the toothpaste because it tastes good and they think it's food. So my, you know, if my hand's in there, I get chomped on a little bit. So I really like starting off with these. And even before I do that, I am just putting my hands in their mouth. So I'm running my fingers over their gums and over their teeth. I'm doing this from the moment I'm bringing them into my house. So as puppies, my girls had me in their mouths, messing around, looking at their teeth, touching their tongue so that I could prepare for brushing their teeth when it came to that time and so that the vet could go in and look at their teeth. So my dogs know how to open their mouths and how to you know, let me in there and let other people in there. And that's really, really helpful and very important. The second you bring a puppy or a dog in your house, you should start that training once you've built up a little bit of trust. If you're adopting a dog and they're like still getting to know you, maybe don't go sticking your hands in their mouth until you've built up some of that trust, but then start touching. And that can start as simple as like touching their cheeks, moving their lips up, kind of opening those front teeth just for a second, build up that trust and that awareness of getting your fingers and your hands inside of their mouth. Then move on to just sticking this on your finger and having it in their mouth, not brushing, no toothpaste, just the sensation of the silicone. 
So I built it up with this. I started adding things like toothpaste and I would scrape off their teeth with the silicone. I then moved to the bristle version of that because the silicone wasn't getting it as clean as I thought a bristle version would. So I grabbed a bristle and I went in and I, go, I cleaned their teeth with it. And so I started on one side and then I moved to the other side. I did the front, I did the roof of their mouth and their tongue. And I built all those things up, very quick brushings at first, and then it built up to more intensified brushing. The, again, the downfall with this is that it does slide around. And so I would be um, inside of their little cheeks and I would be getting their side teeth and it would kind of flip over. And then I had the plastic smack it against their teeth. So this was not my ideal option. It is a great next step to get them used to it and to give me more control. And when they get used to the bristles, when they get used to how these things function, then I moved up to this. I am here now with all of my dogs and this is the magical sweet spot. I use the bigger side on my bigger dog, my English Springer Spaniels, for my little Paparanian. I use just the tiny side and I put toothpaste enough to cover the bristles. And then I will go in and I will start on their cheeks and I will get the side teeth. I'll get the other side teeth. I'll get the front teeth. I'll get the roof of their mouth and their tongue. And then I'll go for those sides again because the buildup really tends to be on the sides for their teeth. And because I now have this long handle, I can put this in their mouth and not have it twist around because I'm holding that handle from a distance. It's not on my finger able to spin around. This way, I am never having plastic hit into their teeth, which is a game changer for me. And I'm able to just do whatever I need to do in order to brush those teeth. I can kind of move it around it and really get them clean with this. So this is my ultimate goal for toothbrushing with my dogs. It may not be for your dogs, depending on what your dog is going to tolerate and depending on what you do, but for functionality and for making sure I'm protecting myself, protecting their teeth, protecting their inside of their mouth. This is the one that gives me the most control, the most power and the most ability to clean. So I very much like these. This particular one comes with a tube of toothpaste. Um, so I very much like the charcoal mint from Arm & Hammer. We are using that. I got that at PetSmart, but you can also get them at different places. I'll link it down below for you. And getting it in this set usually comes with this and toothpaste, sometimes it has one of the little finger ones. Sometimes it has one of the little silicone ones. They come in different types of sets, but this is my ultimate goal. So when I am training future dogs or giving advice to other people who are training their dogs to brush their teeth, I do recommend starting with the silicone all the way around ones and then building up to the finger bristle ones and then getting yourself to this place. This is the safest, most effective place for me and my dogs. And I I would guess that it is for most dogs as well. Drop your questions on dog toothpaste and dog toothbrushes and how I did the process of this. I'm actually gonna do a video on how I brush their teeth. So I'm gonna have you an actual tutorial where you can see exactly what I'm doing coming up soon. If you wanna see it, go ahead and let me know. I might bump it up on how quickly I am going to be putting this on my list. But we got some cool things coming in terms of dog health and maintenance and care and all of those things. And daily videos helping you navigate the world of dog parenthood so you can level up for your pup and give them the best life possible with as much ease and the least amount of stress for you possible. We'll see those upcoming episodes.